Well, that's She's been discerning one. this since she was shortly out of college. She was our perpetual student. <laughs> that's the truth. So, but she's, she's done well with her education and it's paid off well for her. And now here she is finally where she belongs. I don't even remember when I told her. Eileen probably remembers that more than I do, but I don't. Eileen is my, my sibling or my sister. I guess I've intentionally chosen not to remember because now they're happy. And they know that it was the right, right choice for me even if um, our family has a lot of independent women and men in it and they have chosen very various paths and I love my siblings I love my parents and it's like I really have come to the the point of saying I respect your right to be who you are please respect the right for me to be who I am and and we've just agreed to that like when I was um, going to make first vows. We had some real trouble with that. Formation is a challenging time. I'm not going to say it isn't, especially when you've had your own house, you've had your own car, you set yourself up for retirement plans and everything till death. What it meant for me is that I had to resign from my position at UW-La Crosse, and that meant that because of how many years I had in there, I was losing 75% of my retirement. And so it was a real high risk adventure for me and my family was concerned about that, just justifiably so. I mean, it was a very high cost, but the call was deep enough that I knew, um, I knew I needed to pursue it. And so even though there was some questioning among the family, um, it was called, I, I chose to go ahead. She's a pretty independent woman. She could make her own decisions. <laughs> Nobody's going to make them for her. This is the one that always <laughs> steps up and keeps the family going. So I can't tell you how many times, if there's going to be a reunion, this is the place. Pretty much at my house. She really does a good job of organizing it and I have always tried to just go and help her the day before and when you got 72 people that's a lot to feed and and even if it's a potluck type thing you still have all of the other stuff and you got a lot of little babies now there's like 35 little ones a lot that were there and they didn't even fight which is really amazing call. I don't always get to go and see her or see any of them because I have responsibilities in teaching. But it's no different than when I was a, a professional woman and a university professor. You just don't pick up and go when you have other things that you need to be about. But if there's somebody that needs it, it's kind of fascinating because I think I have more support to be there for them in community than what I would have had the flexibility and the freedom to do as a single professional woman. And I have to say that to become an FSPA has been kind of a surprise or to become a religious. It's been a bit interesting because um, formation was a tough changing time because I mean obviously it goes from where you had complete control of your life to where you give it up. But what is interesting in community is you are asked to be all you are and all you can be. It's a whole different experience when you have 200 women supporting you, behind you. And there's no bones about it. They may not agree with you, but there is unconditional love there and support in ways that I would have never dreamed could be in life. So it's been a, a good good match for me to become part of community. I've seen her change and grow as far as her religious aspect since she's been a sister, which has been nice to see her settle in more and be more at peace with herself. So I think that's been really, um, really a beautiful process to see.